Tuskegee Airmen say is something we behold and love. I'm here to tell you about the Tuskegee Airmen when I came a little, came about. This gentleman here is Colonel Bill Davis. He was our lifeline. He was our commanding officer. He was the West Point man who graduated in 1936 from West Point, and for four years, nobody spoke to him because of segregation. Gentlemen here, gentlemen, Chappie James, Daniel Chappie James. He was the first black four-star general in the military. He played the system, but he got what he wanted. Unfortunately, he died 28 days after he retired. We miss him. This statue we put at the Air Force Academy in 1988. Why? Because we want all Americans who visit that academy know that black men did something to help save this country. This monument is at the Air Force Honor Court in Dayton, Ohio. We put that there for the same reason. These are some of the planes we flew. P-40, P-51, the B-25. We also flew the P-39 and the P-47. When I graduated from cadets, I was 22 years old in 1944. You see, the thing about us, most of us had a degree, are going to get out of the degree before they even let us in. Our counterparts went in out of high school. That was the difference. The 99th, before they shipped them overseas, each pilot had the average of 240 hours and that P-40. He could outfly everybody because that's all we did was train. I mean, if you, whatever you're doing, if you do it constantly over and over for two years, you're an expert. Whatever you're doing. But get your education. Do that for two, four, six, eight, Ten years, you'll be an expert. I was uh, with the 477th Bomber Group, 617th Squadron. And when the group got back, I flew the P-47. Then I've been flying planes ever since. Harry said, I'm not going to let any more of my kids get killed. That was a hard lesson to learn. But he was a man of integrity. He believed in the fate of the United States. And believe it or not, he did more for civil rights than a whole lot of people realizing. He was the one that said, if you can't can the heat, get out of the kitchen. And that's it. The buck stopped here. And he meant that. He was the top dog, and whatever he said, he meant it. I was one of the ones in this. They put me out and wouldn't let me get back in. Because segregation. You don't have to worry about it nowadays. But when, I got, when they put me out, I was one of the 162 black officers that got arrested for going in the white officer's club. In 1945. He didn't tell you they tore up the clip. 
We didn't tear it up because it had a major had a major standing at the door. And when you walked in the door, it said, Mister, you're not supposed to come in here. He said, Why not? This is my club. He said, No, it's off limits to you. He said, Well, I'm going in anyway. He said, No, you're not. You're going back to the barracks under the house arrest. We popped through and slew him, said, Yes, sir, and walked out. 162 of us. When the war department heard about that, what in the hell's going on down there in that little base? All hell broke loose. In the end, Colonel Settleway was shipped out. Colonel Davis and his command was sit right down on us. We're all black again. That was the good part. And that's the way we ended up. In 1948, President Truman issued an edict. Said we will desegregate the armed services. It took him about five, six years to do it, but right. he did it. Book here has got more information about those generals than any book on the earth. We went down to archives and got all their saying. You know, all long distance calls from the generals were recorded. They didn't know it. And they spoke offhand about everything. Uh, one thing they spoke about it was, you know, we're getting ready to send them overseas. What shall we give them? What kind of planes? One suggested, well, let's give them the new A-26. The B-26, that's what B-26. That's where one pilot is in the plane. He said, no, no, we can't do that. They'll come back with all their remnants, and we won't be able to control them. <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid, but that's what it says in here. One of our guys, Warren, Jim Warren, he stayed in and made a lieutenant colonel. He was a navigator with us. But he stayed in and got his wings and retired a lieutenant colonel. He went down to Icai and he had a book that thick. And when he ended up, he had this. All true. Facts. <laughs> they called us heroes. We weren't heroes. We were just somebody who wanted to do a job. We had never lost a, a bomber to enemy fighters while we were escorting. This is the group shooting down the 262 jets. It was eight shot down during the war. We got four of them, but we never got credit for it. There is a, was a saying back in World War II, there would not be any minority heroes, no minority whatever group it was, got the Medal of Honor in World War II. After all the mistreatment the blacks have over the years, there has never been a black traitor to this country. Never. We love this country. It's my country. I won't do anything to mar my citizenship. So when you came out of there, you were officer? Officer and a gentleman. And so what, said Congress. What rank did <laughs> well, What's the highest rank you had? Second. Like? Second lieutenant. lieutenant. Great. Um, were you in strictly a black unit, or was it integrated? It was strictly integrated? all black. Tuskegee Airmen was all black until they integrated the bomber, see? And when he tried to uh, segregate us, we told him you have to be losing his mind. <laughs> I'm an officer and gentleman by act of Congress, and I'm supposed to visit any facilities on this base. Yeah. And uh, we said we're the first citizen for civil rights in 1945. So when you guys went into the officers' club there, mm -hmm. well, what? Could you talk a little more more about that? What happened? And well. Uh, Colonel Selway was a southerner from 
Alabama somewhere. And he wanted to uh, keep the base, he wanted to segregate the base, really. Yeah. And uh, so he uh, put a directive out that we weren't supposed to go into office club number two, which was the original office club, beautiful office club, but a swimming pool and everything, tennis court and everything. Mm -hmm. He took the NCO club, refurbished it, and made it officers club number one. So you go down to that. And we told him, you got to be losing your mind. <laughs> you got a beautiful facilities here for all officers? And you think we're going to go down to the NCO club? No way. So that was the beginning of the end for him. What was the reaction of like the, the white enlisted men? Are... We had no problem with them. Good. Really, we had no problem with them because heck, we had been, most of us from California, we've been living with whites and everything else most of our lives. They respected us. It's just the top brass wanted to keep it going. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But you see that. The white took prejudice overseas with them. And they segregated Italy and tried to segregate France. Hmm. And they tried to segregate England. But they wouldn't have it. Yeah. So that's the worst part about America. Um, a group, a few in a group, can spoil the whole Thing. All we knew is we could fly better than anything else and we keep even getting on our tails. That's it. So it's just that focus the next step? That's right. Focus on the job. Great. That's when we went through the crap we did. We were focused on getting a, our wings and finishing the cadets. But if we didn't listen to all the other stuff that's going around, we wouldn't have done it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. With no outside influence on us whatsoever. So after the war, were you a commercial pilot? Or did no, you just no, no, kept it up no, as a no. hobby? Or? It was still segregated. And our the airline said we didn't have enough flying time. Really? Oh, any kind of excuse to keep it from getting into the airline business. We let it go. Okay. <laughs> well, were you able to fly? I, I, you said you flew 747. I've, so. I've flown individually since uh -huh. then. Personally, I have some friends in high places. Okay. <laughs> so what is, um, what was your profession after the, after the war? Well, I eventually went back and started working for the government. Because he wouldn't let me get back in the Air Force because uh -huh. of the Freeman Field incident. So I uh, went back and started working for the government, retired from the government, then started my own business. I retired from that. Then I started working for our scholarship fund, and that's what I've been doing since 1970.